Our brother, we got our missionary in training right here in the classroom tonight. We're going to go ahead and use you. <clears throat> Dear Lord, uh, thank you for this day. I thank you we can come here to learn about your word, and I pray you'll just help us to understand it, and I pray you'll bless this time. And in your name, amen. Amen. Well, we're going to look at the book of Jonah, but we're going to talk about Hebrew tenses just a little bit before. How many Hebrew tense stems are there? Seven. Thank you. You got an A plus for tonight. All right. There's seven Hebrew tense stems. All right. And uh, Brother Roger is studying the call stem right now, which is what? Simple, active. All right. The call stem is simple, active. And of course, there's all kinds of combinations of this. We have the call stem, such as simple active, and then katal, which means to kill or to murder. It would say he killed. And the nifal is simple passive, he was killed. The intensive active is PL stem. Remember the PL stem has great force and violence. He killed brutally. And then the intensive passive is pual. He was killed brutally. And the intensive reflexive is hithael. So I want you to remember this as we look at these. When, we, when I read all of these tenses off to you, remember how they are acting, how the action is going about. He violently killed himself. And then the hithel, the causative active, he was caused to kill himself. And then the hothel, the causative passive, he was caused to kill. All right. Now what are the two volitionary... What are the two volitionary tense roots? Kind of like voices in Hebrew. What are they? Remember what they are? We're going to run into them tonight. Cohortive and juicy. And what does that mean? It means it comes from within. You do it. It's like the subjunctive mode or the middle voice in, uh, in Greek. Subjunctive and middle voice in Greek. Now, uh, <clears throat> while consecutive perfect, if we have that, what is while consecutive perfect? While consecutive perfect. Remember what that one is? We also refer to that as what? Future perfect. You will have done this. You will have done this. Okay? How about while consecutive imperfect? Now, while consecutive perfect is you're doing it and you continue to do it for a while. Okay? A participle. A participle. A participle is continuous action. Continuous action. Brother Steve, it's good to see you here tonight. <coughs> How many declensions are there in Hebrew? How many declensions are there in Hebrew? Eleven. How many declensions are there in Greek? Three off. Three. Okay. Now let's go through the alphabet real quick and just read the alphabet in Hebrew because we can't do this too often. We're going to tell you what they are. The olive is what? The olive. Say olive. Olive. Now, olive, what is a sign? What does it mean? In ancient Hebrew, it was an ox's head. Okay? And the bait. Bait. Oh, what is the sign of the bait? A house. All right. And how about the gamel? The gamel. The sign is a camel. Camel. All right. And then the doleth. The doleth. Doleth. Door. Okay? And uh, how about the hay? Hay. Huh? A window. Okay. And the wall? Wall. Remember, it's a sign like this right here. That's a wall. What? It's a reaping fork. Like a side. Okay, like a side. Like a side. The wow. All right. And then the... Uh, the Zion, Zion, that's like a weapon, it's a, a, like a stick with a head on it, like a tomahawk or something. 
and uh, uh, Chath, Chath, Chath is fence. And then the Teth. The Teth looks like a what? The Teth. The Teth, what, you tell me what this looks like. You people that haven't even been in the class before, what does that look like? A snake. That's good. That's a Teth. That's a real strong T. Okay. <laughs> yeah, he's taking notes. All right. And then Yod. Yod is this sign in Hebrew, it's this letter. And if you put your hand up there like that, it looks like a yod. And yod means hand. Okay? And then cough. Cough is an open hand like this. <clears throat> and when you're writing Hebrew, here's a cough. Okay? And it's kind of short right here, the cough. The pay is longer. And the pay always has a tongue in it. The cough is shorter. Like that. The Hebrew script and the Hebrew printing is very poor. If you write like this and like that, you won't make mistakes as much in your writing. All right, and Lamet. What does a Lamet look like? Lamet. That looks like a whip, doesn't it? Like the whip. All right, and then the Mem. Mem. Waters, and then Neen. Neen is a fish, and then the Samic. All kinds of S's in Hebrew, by the way. The Samic is what? That's a prop. And then we have the Ayin. Does it work? When you say that last one was a prop. Yeah, a prop. Yeah, yeah, prop. Okay, here's an Ayin. It looks like some kind of a monster. See, it's got little eyes sticking up. That's I in. Okay. And then we have the word pay. Pay is the mouth with a tongue in it. Pay. 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 All right. And then sodhi is a T-S sound. The sodhi, there's a sodhi and a final sodhi. This thing like this also. And that looks like a what? Fish hook. Fish hook. All right. And then a kof, kof is this word right here, or that letter, that means the back of the head, all right, kof is the, the back of the head, resh is head, resh is this letter like this, that means head, all right, and then sin and shin, sin and shin in Hebrew. And if you turn it upside down the other way, it looks like tooth, teeth, teeth roots, doesn't it? Roots of the teeth. All right. And then we have the word towel. The towel in Hebrew today is like this. And a long time ago, it was like this or like this. That was a towel. Okay? Or even like this. That was a towel. Huh? And that meant cross. The olive and the towel. The olive and the towel is the first and the last letters of the Hebrew alphabet. What are the first and the last letters of the Greek alphabet? Omega. Alpha and omega. That's the corresponding. Okay. And alpha, et, like this, the first and the last letters of the Hebrew alphabet is the sign of the direct object. In other words, power and strength is going that way. Action is going directly. It's like a, it's like an arrow saying, here comes the, here comes the power. Okay, here comes the strength. Barashith bara. Elohim, et hashemayim. We et haaretz. Okay, et, et. Yes, Brother Rose. Uh, that cross, C R O S S? Yeah, cross. And then here's another one. Uh, sin? Sin and shin. Sin, sin has got a, it's like a, it's an S in Hebrew. The sin is just an S. And the shin is an S-H sound. This, this, is, this is, this is, sin, sin and shin. Oh, it's just an S. 
Oh, yeah. well, the roots of a teeth. Right. The roots of a tooth. Okay, roots. The roots of a tooth. Roots. Yes. All right. Let's go to the book of Jonah now. Let's go, let's go to the huh? All right. Let's go to the book of Jonah. Jonah. What does Jonah mean? Jonah. The book of Jonah is the book of John in the Old Testament. What does it mean? Paloma. Huh? Paloma. What does that mean? Dove. Dove. All right. It means dove. Dove, and dove is a sign of peace and comfort and safety. Innocent as a dove, and the dove was the, uh, the turtle doves were the offering of the very poor people. Okay? Leber Jone. Okay? Jonah. Jonah. It's quite a guy. Jonah 1 and verse 1. Now, in your Bibles, just look it up, and I will read it to you in Hebrew. And then we'll look at each word, okay? Yonah. Why he? Say why he. The var. Ha the var. El Yonah. Ben Amitsi Lemor. Okay, now let's look and see what it says here. Jonah. The book of Jonah. Jonah. <coughs> and then it says here. In the first word, it says, uh, why he? Now, why he? What is that? Why he? Why? On the front of that is what? And thank you very much. You got an A plus tonight, young lady. That's the conjunction. Page 253 in Brown, Driver, and Briggs. And. The word and in, in Greek, and is written out like this, basically, most of the time. In Greek, in Hebrew, this is it. That's it. And it is attached to words. So you went and, to, for, from. All kinds of prepositions on the front and conjunctions on the front of the Hebrew word. Hebrew is shorthand. It's shorthand. You can put one Hebrew word up there and it takes a whole line underneath. It's not like Espanol. Espanol, you put ten words and you got one. <laughs> translation. But this one here, Hebrew, one word means a lot of things. Okay? So why he means, and he became. Haya is the root of it. Haya. It's third person, master, senior, cow, wow, well, consecutive, and perfect. Tell me the tense. Tell me the kind of action right there. Wow, well, consecutive, and perfect. He already was, so he keeps on being. That's right. It's something that continues for a while. A while consecutive and perfect. Okay? It's not like the true imperfect tense, because that keeps on being. But this was and continued to be for a while. <coughs> and he became and continued to be, continued became, word. Here's the word, the bar. <coughs> the bar. The bar. What's the equivalent in, in Greek of the bar? What's the equivalent of the bar in Greek? Logos. Logos. John 1 and 1, in beginning, kept on being the Logos, the Word, ha the bar. And who is it? It's Jehovah. All right. Here we have the bar put in two different ways. Now, the Jews did not say the name Jehovah. So this is what it was said. They would say, why he the bar, ha the bar. But the word is Jehovah, which we cannot say. <laughs> you cannot say that word. You cannot pronounce it. Not pronounceable. They've got this big modern thing, that, that, Yahweh. Not a, you can't say that. You can't say it at all. Yahweh. That's not possible. Jehovah. Okay. Jesus. Let's take all the vowels out of Jehovah and see what you end up with. It's not Yahweh. Let's take out the vowel. What vowels do we have here? Okay, in English, or not in English, but in Spanish, even the J is a vowel, isn't it? Jesus. Jesus in Hebrew. All right. In Greek, that is. We're going to take the O out. We're going to take the 
PA out. So what do we have here? HVH. How are you going to say that? All right. Now look at Jesus. Here we have the name Jesus. Now it's Asus, okay? Jesus is our English equivalent, but you take... Originally this J was a vowel, so you get rid of that. Get rid of that one, and you get rid of that one. And what do we have in the name Jesus left? The work. You know, that's about as... It's just about as much sense pronouncing the name Jehovah as it is trying to pronounce these two words, okay? So, and he became word of Jehovah. Oh, I got stuff down here, brother. Thank you. Thank you very much. And he became the word. The word is masculine gender. What is the word for uh, Bible in Greek? What's the word? Huh? What's the word for Bible? B-I-B-L-E. What's the word for Bible in Greek? What? Biblos. Okay, it's got an Omicron Sigma on the back of it. Biblos. That's it in Greek. All right. What's it? What's it tell you right here? Biblos. Nominative, singular, masculine, and gender. The Bible is masculine and gender. What do you think about that? How many of you knew that before? We got a masculine gender word. Logos. Word. God. The name of God is in what gender? Theos. Elohim. This is all masculine gender. Okay? Biblos is masculine gender. And in Hebrew, it's masculine gender. And how do we know it's masculine and gender? Why he? Third person, masculine, senior. And he became, or we would say in English, it became word. The edict of Jehovah and the edict of the Jehovah is masculine and gender. And in the New Testament, Jesus is called the Word. In John's Gospel, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and in the book of Revelation. Okay? And the Word of Jehovah, and became the Word of Jehovah, Jehovah's Word. Jehovah means what? What's the name Jehovah mean? He who shall become, because it comes from Hayah, this word that we were just talking about here, this one right here, why he became the one who shall become Jehovah unto El Yona. El Yona. Unto John or Jonah. And they in the New Testament in King James they have it Jonas and John Jonah. Okay? But it means John or Jonah. Unto Jonah. And what does Jonah mean? Duh. The son, son, ben, 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 ben means what? According to a pattern. All right, and then Amite, Amite, son of Amite. What does Amite mean? Amite. He had a good father, evidently. Amite means what? Truthful, truthful. Aletheia in Greek. Althea is a name that comes from this. It means truthful one, truthful one, of a truth. All right, to speak. All right, to speak. That is a Cal infinitive construct, Cal stem infinitive construct from Ameter. Page 55 in Brown, Reverend Biggs, and page 65 in Kohler and Bumgartner now. Now let's see what happens here. Kum. All right, verse number two. Kum, Lek, El Nineveh, Ha'er, Hagidola, Yugera, Aliha, Ki, Alitha, Ra'atham, Lefane. All right. And now Jehovah gives Jonah a command. All right. Now, where is Jonah from in the Bible? Where's he from? Remember when Jesus uh, uh, was being inspected by the Pharisees and uh, the Levites and the, and the scribes and all that kind of stuff? They said, he's from Galilee. There's no prophets from Galilee. Guess where Jonah was from? Galilee. <laughs> Is Jonah a famous prophet of the Old Testament? Was he a great prophet of the Old Testament? What made him so great? 
he had the largest conversion on his preaching than anybody. I want you to understand something about Jonah. Jonah was sent to Nineveh. And we're about to get to that. He was sent to Nineveh. Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. God has his eternal purpose and his plan of the ages, doesn't he? He does. He's got plans. Now, I want you to understand something about, about this story of Jonah. John Shirley, one time, I was teaching a class, and I talked about, and in the book of Jonah, I preached in the book of Jonah. He said, give me the outline of that sermon you just preached. It's like that. He said, man, I want that. And I just sat down and started writing it out like that. Foreordination and predestination. Foreordination and predestination. Let's look at this for just a moment. God ordained Nineveh. What is Nineveh? That was going to become the capital of the Assyrian Empire. Okay? Capital of the Assyrian Empire. The Assyrian Empire would be taken over by the Babylonian Empire, which God would use Nebuchadnezzar the Great. Nebuchadnezzar. You know the book of Daniel, Nebuchadnezzar? He's going to use him to chastise Israel. He used the scissor, Assyria to chastise his, Israel. Now, they're not called Assyria in this book. These are the Ninevites. Ninevites. Okay? God ordained Israel, did he? Did he or not? God called Israel out. He named Israel. Israel was, his, what was Israel's name originally? Jacob. 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 What does Jacob mean? Follow the, to follow the hill. Or to trip. Or to follow the hill. He had a brother named Harry. Remember Harry? Esau. Esau. Esau's name was Harry. Harry means, Esau means Harry. Okay. He had a brother named Harry, and Harry came out first. And Esau grabbed a hold of his heel. Now, before they were ever born, remember what their mother's name was. What was their mother's name? Huh? Rebecca. All right, Rebecca. And what does Rebecca mean? All these, all these names have something. Lasso. It means to lasso and halter tie. It means to lasso and confine or to tie up. And they named her Rebecca because her beauty was so great that it just it captivated everyone. They were just hogtied when they saw her. Okay. Now, according to the Jewish tradition and probably and the Hebrew Bible, how old was uh, Rebecca when uh, uh, when she married Isaac? How old was she when she married Isaac? Nine years old. All right, she was still nursing. She still had a wet nurse that she took with her all the way to Isaac, okay? So she was pretty young. She didn't have a child till she was basically 29 years old. That's when she got pregnant with twins. And she had these twins wrestling in her womb, and God appeared to her and told her what? In your womb are two nations. The younger shall rule over the elder, and so on and so forth. And that was, and she went home and told her husband that. And of course, she wanted to follow the purpose and plan of God. And of course, Isaac did not. God, God had to blind Isaac. He had to blind the man to keep him from blessing the wrong son. And Rebecca told him, "You go in there and you act like you're Esau." Because that man, that old man, my husband, is going to bless the wrong man. And he's not supposed to be the head of this nation. He has nothing to do with it. He's, he's a wild man. He says, you're the family. You're the breadwinner. You're the stability. You're the rock of the family. Jacob, go in there and do what I told you. I can't do that to my father. She said, blame it on me. The father was going the wrong direction. Okay. Now, God ordained every bit of this, didn't he? That's the way it was. God foreordained this. Israel was ordained. Now, Joppa, remember, he went to Joppa. Joppa was a seaport city. I've been to Joppa. That's why they're killing each other over there, over there in, in Joppa right now, all over the place, okay? Joppa was a seafaring city. And the uh, Tarshish, Tarshish, what is Tarshish? What's Tarshish? 
That's Spain. Spain was the great seafarers of the Mediterranean. They built the greatest ships. God, by the way, Joppa means beautiful. Beautiful. Fruitful. Beautiful. That's Joppa. Okay? Now, Jonah is going to run off to Joppa, and we're going to see that in a few minutes. Now, God ordained Israel. He ordained Joppa to be the beautiful city that's going to be a seaport. Nineveh, uh, Nineveh, what does Nineveh mean? What does Nineveh mean? Now, God ordained Nineveh because he's going to use Nineveh to, uh, to chastise Israel. All right? What does Nineveh mean? The house of the fish gods. The house of the fish gods. Okay? The house of the fish gods. That's what Nineveh means. Always say Jonah is the fish? Well, we're going to look at that in a little while, too. You're going to be surprised about a lot of things. We're going to run into some real big things. And, of course, God ordained. Now, he ordained Israel. He ordained Joppa. He ordained Nineveh. And these places had to be there. God put everything in place. And then Jonah, God ordained Jonah. Called him out. Jonah didn't want to go. All right? Now let's think about Nineveh for just a little while. Nineveh would become a great commerce area, and it would become a great nation. These Assyrian kings would become very, very great. It's on the eastern bank of the Tigris. Many things that are very important to the human race and civilization were invented in Nineveh. Libraries. Libraries. Okay? Libraries. How many of you locked your house before you left? Anybody here? You locked your house before you left? You know where locks and keys were invented? Nineveh. They were invented in Nineveh. All right. How about uh, geometry? Geometry. Okay. Geometry, the 360 degrees of the circle was invented. Timekeeping was invented in Nineveh. Timekeeping. All right. The postal service was invented in Nineveh. Plumbing and aqueducts were invented in Nineveh. Plumbing, indoor plumbing. Flush toilets were invented in Nineveh. Aqueducts were invented. What is an aqueduct? It's a canal. It's a canal. Canal above land. Yeah. It's a canal that carries water. Irrigation was invented here. There's a lot of dry land around there. Okay? Dividing governments up into different localities, like governorships, cities, states, and having a governor and a senator and everything that met and, and referred back to the central government, all of these, they would have like princes over different areas. That was first used in this country. In this country. Uh, they invented music. And they were great hunters and warriors. Bowls and arrows and everything. Who, who founded Nineveh? Who was the man that founded Nineveh? Nimrod. Nimrod. Thank you. Got an A+. Plus. Oh, you're doing pretty good tonight, Brother Stephen. Now, now, something else was invented in Nineveh. Okay. Something else was invented in Nineveh that was extremely important to the uh, redemption of mankind. Crucifixion was invented by the Ninevites. Crucifixion was invented by the Ninevites. What year did they do that? Way back yonder. <laughs> a thousand BC, okay? <clears throat> well, you find it. You find crucifixion basically in the, the book of uh, where Haman and, and uh, Mordecai, uh, Esther. Esther. In the book of Esther, you see the first. Now, Isaiah. And, and Psalm 22 talks about crucifixion before it was ever invented, okay? But crucifixion started out as staking a person, impaling them. What they were going to do to, uh, Haman was going to do to Mordecai was to take him up, he put a, he put a stake 
75 feet in the air. And he was going to strip him off naked and take him up there and grease this stake and set him right down on top of that and it would slowly go up through his innards. Now your Jehovah Witness brethren, they will say the word staros means a stake, that Jesus was not crucified on a cross but on a stake. No, he was crucified on a cross. The Roman government, when they came along, of course the Greeks and then the Romans come along, the Romans, uh, they decided they were going to uh, kill people very slowly that were criminals. So they're going to put them out there on a, they put them first of all on stakes and that they last didn't last very long this way. They only died. They died within hours, not over a day. Usually they were dead. They had ruptured inside. They were died, bled to death and, and in great pain, of course. But then they took them and they just had a stake and they drove nails in their hand there and nails in their feet right there and they found out they didn't last very long that way either. So they said, well, we're going to do something different. We're going to take a key cross like this. We're going to put one hand here, one hand there, one hand there, one hand there. And they died too fast still. So they invented this long, torturous form of capital punishment. And it was a towel cross. It could be like this. Or it could be like that. Probably Jesus was crucified on this type of cross. Right. Because it was post in the ground and then they lifted that piece up on it. Yeah. They had a seat right here for set their butt on. They stripped them off naked. They nailed their feet here. They nailed a hand there. They nailed a hand there. And they nailed their hands through here, through your carpal tunnel area, which is very sensitive where all the nerves go through, that's where they nailed him, our Savior. Now, this has been invented. Do you see how the Ninevites were very important in history? Okay. They invented, uh, basically, they, they invented a banking system and all of that. That's, this comes from there. Now, Nineveh was about 60 miles crossed. It's a big city. Uh, the Bible says it was 120,000 people lived in Nineveh. 120,000 souls, nephish souls lived in Nineveh. And when, Je when uh, Jonah preached, all of them got saved. That's quite a revival. Quite a revival. It's quoted in many books in the New Testament. The book of Nahum 1, 1 through 15, Matthew 24, 41. Now Nineveh is about five to six hundred miles northeast of Jerusalem. It's inland. I want you to understand this. Jonah had to start taking off and walking. Now, now let's, let's look at this a little bit. Verse number two. Let's go back and look at it. Gum lek el Nineveh ha'er ha'gadolah yukare aliha ki halitha ra'atham lefane. Arise. God said here, Jehovah God says, Arise. Mask in the singular towel imperative. Arise and you walk. This 500 miles, five to 600 miles now. He's telling him to take a long walk, a walkabout, okay? You walk, El Nineveh, unto Nineveh, all right? Nineveh was larger than Babylonia, okay? It's 60 miles across it, basically. Ha-er, ha-er. What does the word er in Hebrew mean? City. Ha is the and air. Air is what? Huh? Are you saying Y I R U? Uh, ha ir. It is ayin yod resh. Ha ir. What does air mean? It means a city that's guarded, has watchtowers. Okay, it's a guarded city. I want you to go into the city of of Nineveh, the great city of Nineveh. ha Gidalah, Yukera, and cry out, masculine and senior cowl imperative, cry out, Aliha, against her. Now, cities are called in the feminine gender. Jerusalem is in the feminine gender, all right? Because, that's key, because she has come up, her voice has come up. <coughs> Third person feminine singer, Cal Perfect. Her voice has come up. And then we have the word, the Ra Atham. Ra Atham. 
Ra'atham, and Davidson, <coughs> someplace around here, Davidson. Davidson in 688. 688. 688. Ra'ah. I keep knocking these erasers down. <coughs> I need a better. All right. I put the eyes on these audience because I can't see. <laughs> All right. Ra ah. This is the word. Page 688 in Davidson's. To break to pieces. Destroy. Destroy. That's what this mean means. To destroy. It uh, means to make evil, to act it, it wickedly, to do evil, to be destructive, to act in a bad manner, in a worthless manner, in an evil manner, in a wicked manner, in an ill-favored manner, in a calamitous manner, in a sorrowful manner, in a harmful manner, in an injurious manner. A quality of badness. And it also, there's another word that's closely related to this in Hebrew that means the ram, ram. That even sounds bad, doesn't it? Ram, which means naked, which means evil. It means to steal. It means to lie. It means to cheat. And it means to be crafty. These words are closely related. Do you understand this? They had become evil. And in the book of Genesis, in the third chapter, it says that the snake, when God created the snake, say, say snake in Hebrew. Nahash. Say that. Nahash. When God created the snake, he was perfect. And he was probably the king of all beasts. But the Bible says, but he became a room. Say a room. And that's his, he becomes crafty, he becomes wicked, he becomes naked. He becomes evil and deceitful. These evils, this craftiness, this shrewdness, this destruction has come up lithane, lithane. What does lithane mean? There's a preposition on front of that, the lament. Before my face. Before my face. You have done this in my face. Genesis 10 and 11, 2 Kings 19, 36, Isaiah 37, 37, Isaiah 58 and verse 1, Nahum 1, 1 through 37, Zephaniah 2, 13, Hosea two and two all go to this. Nineveh means what? The house or the place of the fish gods. All right? It, um, <clears throat> Nineveh in Alcadian, and Akkadian is Niner. In Syriac is Nimue. In Arabic is Ninua, in Hebrew is Nineveh, Nineveh, and in Greek is Nineveh, in Persian is Na, Nai, Nainua, in Latin it is Nineveh. So what is there now? A city. <laughs> a city. I saw it online. I saw a city of this place where it was, the old gate of Nineveh. Okay. Now just think about it. Now God ordained, he ordained Israel, he ordained Jonah, he ordained Jonah, Joppa, he ordained Nineveh, Jonah. Now he's going to ordain a ship. And he's going to ordain a captain. And he's, or, he's going to ordain a whole crew. And he's going to ordain a storm. Preordain a storm. He's going to preordain a big fin. A big fin. It's the big, this fish type creature here is called a big fin. Like a dragon. Like a big dragon. And he's going to ordain the gourd. And he's going to ordain a worm. By the way, this happened somewhere between 753 and 793 B.C. Now let's go to uh, Jonah 
1 and verse 3. Jonah 1 and verse 3. Wayakam. Yonah Livroach. Livroach. Tarshisha. Melethene. Hathabar. Wayared. Yaho. Wayitzma. Ania. Baa. Tarshish. Wayatin. Sikara. Wayared. Ba. Lavo. Imahem. Tarshisha. Milafene. Hadavar. Let's go back and look at these. Now, we know the hair Jonah wasn't very cooperative, was he? God has prophesied that he's going to use Nineveh to, to sue a little corporal punishment on Israel. Okay? Now, he doesn't want to go over there at all. So, he's going to do something. How far is it to Nineveh from Jerusalem, basically? Okay, about five, six hundred miles. And he's up there a little closer because he's in, what city is he from? Not very far from Nazareth. Not very far from Nazareth. He's uh, he's uh, basically from. I can find it here. Gath. Gath Hefer. Gath means what in Hebrew? Hmm. Gath. The wine or grape. Wine press. The, the diggings of the wine press. That's what it means, the gap. And so it's his fruitful area. He's up there. It's not very far from Nazareth, by the way. Who else was raised in Nazareth? Was there ever a prophet from Galilee before? Oh, yes, even from Nazareth. All right? <clears throat> and he rose up Jonah. He rose up and kept on rising up. Third person, Master Senior, Calwell, consecutive imperfect, Jonah. And then Livroach. Livroach. When you see a lament in front of a word, what do you think about, Brother Roger? Two. It means two, or it, as a, if it's a verb, it means what? If it's a verb, it turns a verb into a what? An infinitive. In other words, to flee. To flee. All right? To flee. Cal infinitive construct. All right? It's from the word barach. All right? To flee. And tarshisha. To Spain or Italy. Now, that word Tarshif means hard. There's a lot of rocks in Italy and, and Spain. That's, that's a rocky country, you know that? My grandfather, my step-grandfather, he told me over there in Italy, he said they, uh, they take all the rocks and they bust them up and make soil out of them. They put fertilizer in there and they terrace everything. Every square inch of it. All right? But they had to break up the rocks to do it. Okay? Over there in Hawaii, we have... Rocks, lava, broken up, and they make these areas, these farms, stuff over there. So this is Spain or Tarshish. <clears throat> now, where is Spain and Tarshish from Nazareth? How far? How far? How far is this from Nazareth? Or from the seashores of the Mediterranean there in Palestine? How far? About 2,500 miles. 2,500 miles is five times five is what? 25. Five times further than... And he's going to go by boat in the opposite direction. Instead of going northeast, he's going to go west. The opposite direction. That's just what we call a real obedient prophet. How many of you have done that? I have. I remember one time. <laughs> I was going to go off and hide in Nevada. I ended up being a missionary in Nevada. God me put me in a, between a rock and a hard place where I wanted to preach. <laughs> I would kept on preaching and being a missionary to the Indians, but I wasn't preaching in pulpits. God put me back in a pulpit because that's where I was supposed to be between a rock and a hard place. And it wasn't easy either. What I had run from before was, was, 
wicked people that had hurt me so bad I wasn't ever going to let it happen again. Never, never. Well, it happened again and again and again. But you know what? The calling and election of God is irrevocable. The calling and election of Jonah was irrevocable. He could not run. How far can you get? How far can you go to get away from God? Huh? Not 2,500 miles, because he wasn't going to get there. Spain. Genesis 10 and verse 4. This is a seafaring. God made these sons of Jabin. All right, these are grandsons of Noah. These are sons of Jabin. They were great shipmen. They were shipbuilders. And he ordained that city to use them to work on Noah, Jonah. Hundreds of years later. Okay. And then it says, Milfene. From before the face of Jehovah. He's trying to run from God. In the garden. In the garden. When, when Adam and Eve became a Rome. Remember? What does that mean? That became naked. They became liars. They became thieves. They became wicked. They became crafty, just like the one that had incited them to sin against God. And they stole from that tree. And in Hebrew, those of you who have studied the book of Genesis with me, it wasn't just what they... How many of you have seen pictures of uh, Eve going and getting an apple off of a tree? Now, I've got people that swear up and down that was pomegranate. But they got this fruit off this tree, and you see her taking a bite and giving a bite to her husband. That wasn't what happened in Hebrew. What, what, what happened in Hebrew? She came and gorged herself, just kept eating and eating and eating in the perfect tense, and she kept her husband, and they just keep on defoliating that tree, eating and eating and eating. And that was God's tree. They weren't supposed to touch that tree. That was God's property. So they became evil. They became thieves. They became liars. Okay? Crafty and naked. He's going to flee from the floor the face of Jehovah. And then a word is why you'd read. And he came down to Yapa. Yapa means what? Beautiful. Beautiful place. And then he said, why yitz? Why yimsa? And he found and kept on finding a, a ship, a she-ship. That's a female ship, okay? A she-ship. And the ship she is going, all right, feminine, singular, cow, participle, the ship she is going, Baal, to Tarshish, 2,500 miles the other direction, okay? 2,500 miles the other direction. Why a ten? And he gave its wages. He gave the mistos, the wages of his fare. All right, he paid his wages. And then it says, Why you read? And he went down and kept on down, going down into her, the ship, Lavo, to go with them, Amahem, to Tarshasha, Tarshish, to Spain basically. From before the face of Jehovah. From before the face of Jehovah. One in verse four now. <clears throat> Wahadavar. Hatil. Gedola Ruah. El Hayam. Wahi Sa'ar. Gedol Bayam. We Ha onia. Hish Shiva. Li Hish Shavaya. And Jehovah. Jehovah means what? He who shall become. And Jehovah, he had cast. He had cast. He had thrown. Third person, masculine and singular, Hithael, perfect. He had thrown, he had cast a ruach, ruach wind. Ruach means breath or wind, okay? Now, according to ancient culture, all of this ancient culture, uh, 
In the desert, there was a desert monster called a what? A behemoth. And in the sea, there was a monster, a supernatural monster that caused problems, winds, storms. And that was called what? The Leviathan, which was a dragon with lots of fins. They could breathe fire and, 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 and whistle smoke and, and wind and storms out of it. That's, that's the ancient culture. Okay, so out in here, and when the and in Galilee there was a, a, a Leviathan there that guarded the gates of hell. They believed that the gates of hell were right at the bottom of the Sea of Galilee, which is about 600 feet deep, I believe, in the deepest part. <coughs> anyway, they believed that was the sea or the, the gates of hell, or Sheol. Now they're out here in the ocean. Now we have God uh, casting, we have Jehovah casting a strong wind, a great into the sea, the Hayam, the sea, the waters. And he had become a storm. Now, a lot of times they name most storms, they name them by feminine names, used to. Well, did you know that actually storms should be called the masculine gender? This Leviathan is the masculine gender. This is the devil himself, this great Leviathan, the great Leviathan of old. Okay? Now, I think this Leviathan here is like the Leviathan that uh, uh, in Pharaoh's court that when uh, Aaron threw down his rod and it became a Leviathan, not a, not, a, not a snake, not a serpent, but a Leviathan. That was God's Leviathan. And I believe this, this great animal that caused the storm in the sea out there was God's Leviathan like the Leviathan in the rod of Aaron. Okay? And this great into the sea. And he became a storm great, Gadol, in sea. And the ship, she had, uh, and let's third person feminine singular PL perfect. What does that mean? Very intensely. That's intense and it's also completed action. The ship was going to sink. The ship was going to break up. The ship had decided she was going to break up. That's what it says. The ship had decided she was going to break up. To be broken. Nephel, infinitive construct. Shaver. All right. 11 and verse 5. Is this interesting tonight? This, this story? Why Yeru? Hamalakim. Why is the Zaku? Ish, El, Eloha, Wayetelu, Et, Hakelim, Asher, Baania, El, Hayam, Li, Hakel, Mi Alehem. We yo na yorad el yarkethi hasi fina wayishkov why yeradam and they uh, continued to be afraid. They feared the the mariners, the sailors. This is a crew. The crew was afraid. And they uh, cried out and kept on crying out, each man unto his own individual God. Unto his own individual God. And they, and they hurled, they hurled and they cast, Wayatilu, they cast, all of the utensils, all of the hardware, which in the ship, into the sea, they cast it. They kept on doing this. They cast it in there. They hurled it. To lighten, to become light and slight, to lighten, uh, to lighten her from upon them. And Jonah, he had gone down. Third person, master, senior, Cal perfect. Jonah now was hiding. He's in the hidden mode. 
Do you think you want to know what's going on here? Do you think you know that God's, that's God's causing all this problem out there in the ocean? Then El Yar Kethe. Into the extremity, to the extreme parts, as far away as he can go from the rest of them. Of the vessel. And he laid down. And he laid down. Third person, mass and senior, cow, while consecutive and perfect, he laid down and stayed laid down. And he was in a deep sleep. Third person, mass and senior, Nephel, while consecutive and perfect. One in verse six. Why get prov? Hilah, Rav, Ha Havel, Wyomer, Lo, Mah, Lika, Niradam, Kuma, Kera, El, Elohika, Yule, Yitz Ash, Yitz Ash Shith, Ha Elohim. Lenu, Willow, Novet. <coughs> and he came there and approached unto the captain, the pilot. Everybody is all upset. Now the captain of the ship is upset, the pilot. And he said and kept on saying to him, What to you, sound sleeper? The captain goes down and he says, What to you, sound sleeper? Why are you sleeping so sound when everybody else is about scared for their life? Arise and cry out unto your God. Perhaps he will keep on taking notice. Third person mask and senior hit the L imperfect. He will keep on taking notice. He will he might listen or might think. Literally that word comes from the word think the God of us, and not we shall keep on perishing. Look, the word perishing there, that comes from Avod. What word in, in, uh, in the New Testament comes, in, in what book in the New Testament? Is there a name, Abaddon? Abaddon, in the book of Revelation, Abaddon, which means destruction. We're being destroyed. They figured they were being destroyed by the destroyer himself, by Abaddon destroying one through this terrible Leviathan that caused all the storms in the sea. Wyomaru Ish Ella Re Ehu Liku We Nafila Go Roll off We Na We Nidaya be shilim shami hara hazof lanu waya pilu go ra loaf waya pole haga roll all yona and they kept on saying they said and they kept on saying a man unto us and to his friend each man unto his neighbor or friend or the one next to him, his acquaintance, his compadre. Ye walk and let us fall lots. Let us cast lots. Here's the word Nephilim comes from this word. It comes from Nephal. See that word there? We na pilah. Nephal comes from that. Let's throw lots. Let's cast down lots. Count lots. This lots that we may know for ourselves, look at that word, first person construct plural, cal cohortive, that we may know for ourselves in who the evil. Who is evil? Right off the bat, they find out, we've got a robber, we've got a highwayman, we've got some bad dude on the ship with us. And God is after us. The devil's after us. And, and we're, we're in trouble. This crafty person, this shrewd person, exceedingly, this destroyer, this calamitous person, does this, Hazot, does this, to us. And they fell lots. And he fell 
the lot upon Jonah. Now God, uh, this dice game God was in. He, afford, he foreordained this dice game. Okay? And they threw these lots down, and the lots fell on Jonah. One and eight. One and verse eight. Wayomaru, Elah, Hagedah, Na, Lanu, Baasher, Lemi, Harua, Hazoth, Lanu, Ma, Milaktika. Yuni Ayin, Kavo, Ma, Ar, Artsika, We, Miza, Am, Ata. And they said and kept on saying to him, masculine singular, Hifael imperative, You tell us, please, tell to us on. It's Ba'ashur, because of to whom this terrible evil, this wickedness, this craftiness, the this, to us, what is your occupation? They wanted to know, is he a bank robber? Is he a thief? Is he a murderer? You don't know what? You're a bad guy. We know that you're bad already. You're, you're bad. God's talking. All our gods is calling us upon us and telling us that you're a bad dude. Okay? You need in. And from where do you keep on coming? And what is your land, Artsika? And from this people, you. From what people are you? Where do you come from? What are you doing here? How come you got on our ship? You got us in trouble. We are seafarers, and we are out here, and we can't control the ship. We're dying, and we're perishing, all of us, and it's your fault. Wyomer, Alehem, Ivri, Anoki, Wieth, Hadvar, Elohi, Hashemayim, Ani, Yari, Asher. Asa et hayam wiet hayabasha. Yeah, he makes a great statement here. And he said and kept on saying unto them, Hebrew, Hebrew, Ivri. What does the word Hebrew mean? Anybody, brother, brother Abe, what's the word Hebrew mean? Remember what the word Hebrew means? I'm coming right back at you, Sharon. You got to figure it out yet? <laughs> Brother Abe, you remember what Hebrew means? Abri? Abri? People on, the other People on the other side of the river. The foreigners over there, over yonder. Okay? We're from the people on the other side of the river. I, we et. And, now we et there is a is an and, and et is a sign of direct object. That means actions going that We et Jehovah. All right, we turn to Jehovah, and Jehovah turns to us. Jehovah is the God of us. He's our God. Okay, Jehovah is. He's the God of the heavens. Ha, hash shamayim. Say hash shamayim. What does hash shamayim mean? What does it mean? Remember what hash shamayim means, brother. What? Who remember what hash shamayim, brother? What? Elevated waters. That means uplifted or elevated waters. Uplifted waters. The earth at one time here was a the earth was a ball, and around the earth was a ocean of water, an ocean of water. This is before the flood, okay? And that's what the word comes from now. In the in the bur, in the book of Genesis is Barashith Bara Elohim et Hashemayim. The word Hashemayim there means actually the universe, <coughs> the whole created order and universe. But here we're talking about the God of the heavens. It literally meant uplifted waters, but we're talking about the God of all the universe here. Again, we have another word for universe. Of all the heavens, of all the stars, of all the planets, all the way into eternity, 
all the way into space and time, all the way out to the farthest planet, to the sun, the moon, the stars, every place. He is the one that created the heavens. And I, I fearing, I fearing, I fearing, Riauri, I fearing, I am a fearing one, masculine, singular, cow, participle. Why did he try to run from God? If he feared God. He wanted to run from his job, didn't he? Because God called him to do a job that he did not want to do. I had a guy ask me here a while back. He said he thought maybe he was going to be a preacher. And I said, if you can keep from being a preacher, do it. If you can keep from it, don't do it. But if I said, if God is calling you to preach, don't run. Because it's done. <laughs> I don't care how unable you think you are to do that job. God will help you do the job that he's called you to do. Period. If he's not calling you to preach, don't do it. Don't get you in a place. That, I, I mean, preaching is a hard job. Dangerous job. It's a job where you can you make yourself very vulnerable. It is a vicious job sometimes. Don't do it. Don't call yourself to preach. But if God's calling you to preach, do not run. Because when he calls you, it's done anyway, no matter what. It's done. And he said unto them, the Hebrew. Did we read this yet? We didn't, did we? 1 9. Wyomer, Alehem, Ivri, Anoki, we at Hadvar, Elohi, Hashemayim, Ani, Yari, Asher. I guess we did read that. The one yeah, fearing. Yeah. All right, the one fearing. And he has made the sea and the dry land. He made the sea and the dry land. One in ten. Why Yeru? Haanashim. Yerah. Gedola. Wyomaru. Ila. Ma. Zoth. Asita. Ki. Yadiu. Haanashim, Ki Milfene, Hadavar, Hu Varia, Ki Higid Lahem. <coughs> Ten verses we did. Okay? And they were afraid, and they kept on being afraid, the men, the Haanashim. The fear, great. Fear, great. Get la la. Yira, get la la. Great. And they said and kept on saying unto him, What? Say, Ma. Ma is what? What this you have done? What this you have done? Because they had known, third person construct plural, cow perfect, they had known, the men, that from the face of Jehovah, Jehovah, he was fleeing because he had been told it had been told to them God communicated with them and God and, and old Jonah was fessing up right here he's fessing up man it's my fault it's my fault let's go one more verse here one more verse one in verse 11 Wyomaru Elah Ma Naase Lach Wayishtak Hayam Mi Alinu Ki Hayam Holek We So Er And they said to him, What shall we keep on doing? What shall we keep on doing? First person construct plural cal and perfect. To you. That he may become quiet, this terrible storm, it's him, that this great Leviathan may become quiet and calm down and become peaceful. Third person, Master and Senior, Cal, juicy in meaning, brother. What does juicy in meaning mean? It's volatile. It's volatile. We're going to appease this great storm. 
What can we do to appease the great star? And what can we do, do to appease your God? Okay, because they knew God was in the storm. The sea from upon us. Because the sea... <coughs> because the sea... And then he kept walking on and being stormy. The sea just kept rolling. It kept walking on. Have you, have you ever been out in the ocean and the sea was walking? Moving all the time. The waves keep on walking. They keep on walking and keep on moving. Keep on walking and keep on moving. Do you have any questions? We need did 11 verses. All right. I thought I'd throw this little book at you tonight just a little bit. It was fun. All right. And uh, do you have any questions? There it is. <clears throat> do you want to look at this a little bit more last next week and then go back in the book of Exodus? Do you want to look a little bit more at Jonah? Jonah is a wild little book. Huh? Yeah. It is. It's a very important book in the Bible. We'll go back. We're in, in the book of Exodus. We're uh, talking about Israel's out of the from end of the at the end of the desert and out there in the uh, mid bar, you know, out there in the middle of nothing in the uh, trekless desert, and they're not following God. They're complaining. They're having fits, and God keeps providing for them. Sound like us? All right. Any questions? Do you have any questions, Chris? What's wrong tonight? You know what? I left my book home and I wrote my questions in. Oh, you did? I left my book. I write questions in and I left it at home. Cindy, you got any questions tonight? Stephen? No? Oh. <laughs> How about... Oh, no, we're, we just went over to Jonah. We went over to Jonah, but we studied some Hebrew. We're studying Hebrew regardless. I just wanted to throw a little extra at you tonight. How about Sharon? Do you have a question? Do you think that God ordained this all of this stuff? He prefabricated before, so He could bring about His eternal purpose. Yes. Every one of these things were foreordained and predestined to happen. Because there's going to be a hundred and twenty thousand people. There's going to be a hundred and twenty thousand people saved in this city. And when they and when this evangelist goes out there and preaches and and hates what he's doing. And gets mad, God's going to ordain a gourd to grow and then a worm to eat the gourd. Are you trying to tell me we should just welcome these illegal aliens with open arms as a church? Put them out here. I'm going to pop your papers. I didn't say, I'm not on that subject at all, brother. I think that my people did a real bad job of border control. <coughs> In 1492. <coughs> yeah. This was the Ninevites and the Assyrians that did all of this, okay? And then we have the Babylonian Empire that took over that empire, and God used Nebuchadnezzar, and I believe Nebuchadnezzar was a saved man because, boy, did he make a profession of faith. All right. So God is allowing all of these things to happen in space and time. And, and back in eternity past, he foreordained all these things, okay? We're going to look at it just a little bit more. We'll play one more. I'll give you one more little lesson than Jonah, and then we'll go back to Exodus. Is that all right? You're learning Hebrew. Mm -hmm. And boy, I want you to know one thing. I want you to know that you can go into any book in the Old Testament and play with Hebrew and get a lot out of it. It's loaded with stuff that you don't see in English. It's loaded. But you've got to... You got to unravel the culture and everything else. You've got to unravel all the tapestry and chase every thread. That Leviathan that was out in the deep, we're going to find out he's going to give, he's going to, he's going to be a boat ride. He's going to give Jonah a boat ride. All right, this Leviathan is going to give Jonah... A long time. <coughs> Now, I'm going to ask you something now. Now, you've asked me a question. I want you to know, where is Nineveh? Yeah. How did that fish get there? 
that is, Iran is landlocked. How did the fish get to Iran? Over there in Nineveh. Did he swim all the way around, come up the Indian Ocean and come up back up that way? Or did he fly across and, and land in the Tigris River and swim on to there? How did that happen? If he indeed was big fins, that's what it was, maybe he had wings, maybe it was a flying fish. Uh, 747, they're moving on. I tell you what, it took him a long way. That fish covered some ground, water in ground. Just think about that for a while. Was it a leviathan that could fly? Was it a flip fish that could fly across that land, all the way across the Mediterranean, all the way over there? Did he go all the way around, around to Africa, and come back up through there? How did he get there? I can guarantee you one thing, God was in it. And God did it, whether he went across land, under land, or however he did, he got there. He got there. He was dead, too. Jonah didn't live. Jonah died. He was no. This is after the flood. This is after. After this is seen. Here's uh, Adam. Here's Noah. Here's the flood. Here's the human the government. Noah back over here. Well, Noah set up this human government. Which, this is where Nineveh was found, founded right here. Okay. This is after the flood. This is where Nimrod. And then God divided the languages and divided the continents. And then we have the promise, Abraham was here. Then we have Egyptian promise, Egyptian. And now we're over here in the law age. We're here, right here. That's where we are, in time. In the book of John. In the book of John, yes. That's where we are. We're in about uh, 700 and something BC. We're in the eighth century BC, basically, okay? A long time ago, but during that age of the law, doing the Mosaic Law during that period of time. So would the river have been bigger back then? There was probably a lot of things different back then. But if you look, that fish either had to go across land and fly, or that fish had to drop, go all the way around and swim all the way around Africa and come back up in the Indian Ocean and back up in the... Up the, what? Now that's possible. I mean, God can do anything. I tell you what, if it did, whether it flew or it was swimming, swim to its fins fell off. Remember, it, it was much fins, lots of lots of fins. Okay. Well, God all things, and we can't, and we yeah. can't even imagine the supernatural part of God. God is a supernatural. He's paranormal, you know. He's a creator of all things. No. But see this? We, he just throws a little book in here like this to make you think. This is real good fodder for thought. We're going to look at this. Remember that? They were thinking. They, were, they kept on thinking. They kept on wanting their God to think and consider them. Okay? Maybe your God will remember well, thank you. Remember, yes. The, the gods of the men on the ship, is that the similar to the ones of Pharaoh? Uh, these people had lots of gods. They had teraphim and everything, like you know, like just like Laban had. They had gods. They had family gods. They, they were worshiping their ancestors. Laban worshipped his ancestors. Those teraphim there, they were, they were images of his ancestors. Maybe one even Noah. Okay, whatever. They were worshiping their ancestors. The same as what uh, Pharaoh was. His Pharaoh, the ten plagues, was the gods he was worshiping. Yeah, God was combating them. But anyway, we find out that all these people got saved on the ship. The captain and everybody on the ship gets saved, and they make sacrifices to Jehovah and forget their little gods. Throw them over shore. And they, they, this is quite a revival, people. 